Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in our previous video, we've created this real time clock project. As you can see, we have the date and the time displayed on this LCD display. And we've used this module that is called DS1302, which keeps track of the date and the time whenever we remove the power from the Arduino Uno. This module will save the date and the time because we have this uh, button battery. And if we power it again, you see that the date and the time are correct. But we have one problem. Basically, when this battery is dead, the date and the time that is saved under this module will be lost. So let's try to remove the battery. Then if we unplug the USB cable and bring it back, you see that the date and the time is not correct. In this case, you could use these lines of code to fix the date and the time. So each time you need to uncomment these lines of code and upload the code. But if you give this project to another person that don't understand programming, he will not be able to fix the date and the time. That's why in this video, we're going to add this keypad. So we'll be able to fix it using this keypad. For example, when we click on this star key, we are going to ask the user for the year, the month, until the number of seconds. Then we're going to use these informations to fix the date and the time of this module. So before we get started, consider subscribing to our channel. That helps me a lot. And let's jump right into it. So in this tutorial, you will need this keypad. I've talked about it in one of my previous videos. Make sure to check it out. The link will be under the video description. Basically, we're going to use these three columns. So if you have the keypad that has three columns, you could use it for this project. Basically, we are going to check if we have pressed the star key. In such case, we are going to ask the user for the year until the number of seconds. So you will need few jumper wires. But before that, I'm going to change the pins that we are using for the DS1302 module. Basically, I'm going to use the pins 8, 7 until number 2 for the keypad. That's why I'm going to change the pins of the DS13 module. I'm going to use the pins number 9, 10 and 11. So let's go on top and change the data pin. We are using the pin number 10. The clock is connected to the pin number 9. And finally, the RST is connected to the pin number 11. Then we can use the other pins from number 2 to number 8 to connect the keypad. So let's move this. You will need few jumper wires. I'm going to start by connecting the first row to the digital pin number 8. Then we have the second. Goes to the digital pin number 7 and so on. Now we're going to move on to the Arduino IDE so that we can use the keys on this keypad. But first of all, make sure to install the keypad library. You could go to tools, then manage libraries. Then let's write keypad and let's go down below. Make sure to search for the same name, which is this library. It's already installed because we've talked about it in our previous videos. Make sure to hit the install button. Then we're going to open up an example and modify it to read the keys. Basically, you could go to file, then examples, and let's search for the keypad library, which is this one. And let's take the custom keypad example. Then I'm going to copy these lines of code from the include keypad. Let's hit Ctrl C. Then let's go back to our main project and hit Ctrl V. First, we've included the keypad library. Then we need to set the rows and the columns. Here we have four rows and three columns. Then we have a matrix, which is an array of keys. For me, I have the key number one, then number two, three, and I'm not using the last column, so I'm going to get rid of it. So 
So this depends on the keypad that you have. After that, we need to change the pins that we have used. For me, I've used the pins number 8, then 7, 6, and the last row is number 5. For the columns, I've used the digital pin number 4, 3, and 2. After that, we can check if we have pressed a key, like the star key, using the get key method. So if we go back to this example, you see under the loop function, we are reading the key using custom keypad dot get key. So I'm going to copy this line of code and use it under the loop function of our main project. Here we are displaying the date and the time. Also, we can check if we have pressed the star key. We'll be able to fix the date and the time. We can check if the custom key equals the star key. In this case, we're going to ask the user to enter the year using the LCD display. So first we need to clear it using the clear method. Then let's set the cursor using LCD.setCursor. I'm going to go to the first column and the first row. Then let's print enter year using LCD.print enter year. And because we're going to ask the user to enter these numbers few times, like the number of years, the number of seconds, minutes, and so on, we can create a method or a function that is responsible for reading that number. So let's go down here and create a function. Basically, a function is a piece of code that is responsible for a specific task, like entering a number. It could be the year, the month, or the number of seconds. So if you haven't watched my video about the functions, make sure to check it out. First, we enter the return type, so it returns an integer. I'm going to call it get data. First, I'm going to add a new variable so that we can store the data. It's going to be a string, then we're going to convert it to an int. I'm going to call it data. First, it's going to be empty. Then we can enter in a while loop using while true. And each time we're going to read a new character using char c equals custom keypad dot get key then we can check if the key equals the hash sign we're going to exit out of this loop and return the data so we're going to use the hash key to confirm the value so if we read the key hash or it's called the pound key in this case we can exit out of this loop using the break command but if it's a number, using else if, so we can check if the character C is a digit number using a built-in method that is called isDigit. So this takes the character C and it returns true. If it's a number like the key 1, 2, in that case, we are going to add it to our string, which we have called data, using data, plus equals the character C, we could also print the values on the LCD display. So we can move the cursor to the second line using LCD.setCursor. And the position is 0, 1. 1 is the index of the second row. Then we can print the digit values that we have entered using LCD.print, the character C, so that we can know what we have entered. And once we exit out of the while loop, we're going to return the value using return data, but data is a string that contains the uh, keys. We can convert to an integer like 2022 using dot to int. Now let's use this function a few times. Under here, first we're going to use it to get the year using get data. We can store the value inside a variable using int year equals what this function returns. Then I'm going to copy this few times to get the other informations. Like the month, we can store it inside another variable like month.
and we don't need to ask for the number of seconds we're going to set it to zero by default after that we're going to use all of these variables to set the date and the time of the rtc module basically we need to create an object like we have done here the type is rtc date time we can call it new time equals rtc date time and instead of entering the date and the time of this computer we're going to enter our variables then we can set the date and time using rtc dot set date time and we enter the new time so let's copy these lines of code and let's use them under here let's change the name to new time equals rtc date time then we can enter the variables in order first we have the year then month day hours and finally the number of minutes and for the seconds i'm gonna use zero by default and that's pretty much it now we'll be able to fix the date and the time of this rtc module using our keypad so let's upload the code so I forgot to change the name to new time then let's hit upload again I think the true keyword starts with a lowercase yeah now we have this blue color and let's hit upload and yeah the code is working now we'll be able to fix the date and the time using our keypad so if I hit the star key, we have the message enter year, I'm gonna enter 2022, then let's hit the pound sign, the month is 4, the day is 5, then the number of hours, we have 14, and 10 minutes. And there you go, we have fixed the date and the time of our real-time clock. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any question or comment, make sure to write it under the comment section down below. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so that you get notified with my new videos. And I will see you in the next one.